Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Wednesday, the 7th of August 2024. In today's Mill news, we will discuss at the beginning of the video uh, the Daily Mill news uh, as normal. And then at the end of the video, we're going to go back and have a little uh, introspective look at uh, the big story from yesterday. Um, quite disgusting um, that Mill are going to operate a left luggage bag drop facility that will be charging fans six pounds per item and we're going to look at what other clubs uh, in uh in london are doing and uh in w what other uh sporting venues are doing and then uh we'll see if mill are um if they're following the industry standard or whether they are breaking it so uh stay tuned for that uh, but we will start off with this from uh, the southern news.co.uk so Harris aims to get Mill back in the right half of the table um, so there uh, is your table half full or half empty uh, this is from the southern news.co.uk uh, Neil Harris says Mill can have a say in the promotion chase as he bids to lead the club into the championships top 10 aha so that's our target is it top 10 okay cool uh, the Lions had been regular finishers in the top half until last season's unexpected relegation struggle, a fate which Harris successfully helped the club avoid by guiding them to safety following his reappointment in February. Uh, Harris would love to see Mill punch above their weight again by being involved in a playoff push. Oh, so it's playoffs now. We'll make your mind up. Are we in the top 10 or in a, we're trying to get in the playoffs? What, what are we doing here? Uh, something uh, which could well be determined by what transfer business takes place between now and the end of August. Okay, uh, again, another ominous statement. Oh, I hope so. The manager replied when asked if the lines will feature at the right end of the table. Oh, it's twofold. Uh, firstly, uh, we finished last season brilliantly uh, and we ended up with five wins in a row and eight from 13 to propel us uh, into a comfortable 13th place uh, finish in the end. Uh, of course, we want to be better, but then uh, you can't hide from the fact that the current squad uh, obviously find it difficult for the vast part of the season before I arrived. Uh, we can't lose sight of the importance of, of a transfer window and, and that we continue to add to the group because ultimately we are a, a largely a similar group to the one last year barring a few outfield signings. Uh, we've also lost a few as well who were here on loan, so we've still got some work to do in that sense. Uh, what I've seen in pre-season is there is a doggedness about us. There is a real togetherness and a spirit about us. Uh, there is a culture at Calment Road that we've uh, created of, or already, which is going to be important uh, for us to have success. Uh, and we're just going to try and add a little bit more quality to the group to make it a little bit more rounded. Harris accepts that there are going to be plenty of much more likely contenders up there in the automatic spots, but staying competitive with the chasing pack is still possible. The manager explained, oh, you always look at the teams uh, who have come down and then Leeds who didn't go up and expect those sides uh, to be the front runners. Uh, then you look at the teams who have been in the Premier League in the past decade and expect... Uh, them to do well because financially they've had the backing over the last five years in particular where they've gone out and spent quite a lot of money to bring in players and last year we sort of expected uh, the three relegated teams to make the running and they did uh, Leicester and Southampton uh, both got promoted where, whereas Leeds just missed out uh, this year I, I expect the relegated teams and Leeds to lead away for the majority of it but then there will be an opportunity for the other teams to break in it will be quite open for the next five or six teams uh, fighting for the playoff places and, and a top 10 finish Okay, so again, very worrying signs. Um, Neil Harris talking about the squad's not as good as last season, and uh, we need to bring in players before the transfer window. Um, now here's the thing: transfer window um, uh, closes September first, right? That means you cannot sign any players from another club. You can sign players that are out of contract, um, and I've, I've uh, they're free agents basically. And there's quite still still quite a lot a lot of free agents around, but um, they might not be the best players. You, they're good squad players, maybe, um, but in terms of uh, you generally sign them if you, if you've got injuries and you need uh, a, anybody, somebody decent player to come in. Um, so there you go. But obviously, so that means that from September the 1st until basically 
January the 1st, we are locked in. That's it. The squad we got is the squad we got. That's it. And if we don't do the business um, off the field, the business on the field is going to be rough. And um, I can see, uh, looking in my crystal balls, I can see, um, I think I can see Neil Harris uh, walking again. Especially if the fans turn on him. Um, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility. Um, so, and you would imagine like the last couple of seasons, how crazy, how crazy and unexpected and weird things happening, sad things happening, like John Berlson passing away in a, in a traffic accident, um, that didn't involve any other vehicles, uh, Sarkic, uh, collapsing on holiday. Um, managers getting uh, walking out, getting sacked. Another one coming in, getting sacked. Uh, the CEO and another two two other people getting getting the, the tin tack as well. Um, just strange stuff happening around the club. Um, was it good stuff as well with the with the thousand year lease? Um, it's being sorted out with Lewisham. Um, but yeah, man. Like obviously the um, the uh, West Kingsdown. We got permission to that. Oh, yeah, Started doing anything there yet? Because because it's too expensive. Um, just crazy, crazy, weird, unexpected things popping up here and there. Um, so I think that's gonna be the new reality now. And the most unexpected thing that I can see happening is that we don't sign any players, and then Neil Harris uh, starts getting sick uh, stick from the fans, and he decides to walk away again. Um. Which would be a shame, but for some bizarre, bizarre reason, um, there are a lot of people, a lot of Millwall fans who have animosity towards Neil Harris, um, which is just bizarre. I, I understand if you think he's he's not doing a good job, uh, and you should be entitled to express those opinions, but um, there are people they are they're only silent now because it's going so well. That he did well last season, and as soon as it turns, as soon as we we have a defeat, which you saw it in the game against Southampton, we lost that game, and uh, on social media they were out again, like Harris out. We're not going anywhere with Harris. So, um, so yeah, so I, unless Neil Harris basically doesn't lose a game, um, because they will just pipe up and uh, run their mouths as soon as we lose and I can't see Neil Harris not losing a game so win draw win draw win draw and maybe a loss but if we lose two in a row oh man the knives are going to be sharpened and they're going to be out and they're going to be in uh, Neil Harris's back um, which is um, uh, just bizarre bizarre behavior but what can you do what can you do um now Again, we got some interviews. I think this is from press day. Um, obviously, they were there was an open training ground, uh, training thing on on the pitch, and I think they they did some interviews and stuff uh, for Mill TV and for Sky. So I think we've got some some of that from uh, now from the South London Press, which is the London News Online uh, So we've got Neil Harris talking some more. Uh, we have to continually keep moving forward as a football club on and off the pitch. Mill boss Harris on Championship restart. Uh, Neil Harris has talked about the importance of Mill strengthening their squad options uh, as he looks to build on their usually positive end to the last championship season. The Lions start the 24-25 campaign at home to Watford on Saturday. Uh, Harris came back to SC16 as head coach in late February after Joe Edwards sacked. The club's all-time record goal scorer at the helm when Mill won promotion from League One oversaw a major upturn in form that pulled them clear of, the, of drop danger with fixtures to spare. So far, Mills' transfer activity in terms of outfield additions has been Notts County striker Macaulay Langstaff and Jafet Tanganga, who made a big impression on loan and was available on a free following his release by Tottingham. Uh, oh, we rode the, the wave last year when I came in. The momentum, the spirit, atmosphere. Harris told the South London Press. Uh, the confidence in the place was uh, phenomenal and hugely enjoyable. Uh, other, other than promotion winning seasons, you don't get uh, many moments like that. And it was a wonderful time for us. 
uh, we know the areas we need to improve as a team and it's obviously your ongoing uh, to help us become that top half team again and it's, try it's trying to push for, for, for the promised land uh, the factors that drag us through last season are still there for us so we still have a wonderful team spirit and culture at Galmont Road uh, we still got doggedness, uh, willingness and a desire and about us to be better and also to be difficult to beat uh, to be successful in the championship uh, you need to have individual ability, pace and power uh, goals from all over the pitch uh, and that's the difference between the teams in the top 6, the top 10, top 12 and the rest now uh, we've had a wonderful pre-season, I've really enjoyed it and the lads have worked extremely hard uh, the application, attitude and, and the work put in is a pleasure to be part of this every day but it's my job to always want more and it's my job to try and drag the club forwards this season Season and, and as the demand in the transfer window, we need to step on the next level uh, that can carry us through the first five months of the season until January, and then we can look to improve again. For our football club in the modern era and the level we play at, uh, we'll, we have to continue to keep moving forward. Uh, we are uh, with the structure of the pitch and staff and, and facilities, uh, but we need to make sure we keep moving forward on the pitch because that's what we want to do. So again, you can see Neil Harris, he's literally pointing out that we need to improve even if it's just um, something to get us through a little bit better than we are now, to get us through to January, like he even says, to get us through to January, and then we're going to improve again. So even he's realised, look, you don't have to make the team perfect right now. Just make it better than it is, and we can come back in January and then put the cherry on the top. So even he's saying it. Um, moving on to this. Um, actually, no, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We have, we're going to move on to this from londonnewsonline.co.uk. Uh, Joe Bryan bigging up Romain Essay. So he's been so good in preseason. Experienced campaigner has praise for Mill prospect Romain Essay. Joe Bryan reckons that Romain Essay has developed physically as the Mill teenager gears up for the 24 25 championship campaign. The England under 19 international 19 has played plenty of minutes in pre season. And the lines are set to be depleted in the attacking areas with Zion Fleming out with a calf injury. Uh, there are also a winger light with uh, Ryan Longman back at Old City after his loan spell in the previous campaign. Uh, Mill had coached Neil House has kept talking about the need to add to his offensive options with the championship side only making two outfield signings so far. Uh, Brian put a, a great chance wired from a superb SA cross in Saturday's 1 0 friendly defeat to Southampton. Oh, I, sh uh, well, um, I should probably score, I should score, uh, the Mill left back told the South London Press. Oh, it's an unbelievable ball. Uh, he has been so good in pre season, he, he's really matured. And you can see he's filled out a little bit. You see his legs. He's got that strength now. Hopefully he's robust enough to deal with the vigours of the championship. Like in pre-season you've seen. Whether through lack of players or through the manager's trust. Like he's slowly growing into the manager's observations. Which is exactly what you want in a young player. Uh, so there you go. Um, an admission by Brian that he should have scored that. Which I think I agree with that. And uh, yeah. That's, that's what... That's what we see in SA, the vision, the ability to put balls in. Obviously, a lot of people just say, oh, he does these flicks and tricks, and he's, he, yeah, because he's trying to make things happen. Obviously, it doesn't work out all the time, and that's what happens when, you, when you're when you an attacking player and you're trying to make things happen. You need to play the percentages, and uh, obviously, when it does work, you score, you, or you, you put chances on the plate that people should score. When it doesn't, obviously, it causes chaos, and you have to run back. And you have to defend it, which is unfortunate. But then, you, the saying goes, you can't make an omelette without cracking some eggs. So, there you go. Uh, now, moving on to this uh, from the Southern News. UK, Coops wants Mill to fly out of the traps. Okay. Uh, Jake Cooper stressed the importance of a positive start to the new season with the Lions facing three games in the opening week. Uh, Watford are first up this Saturday at the Den before Tuesday's Carabao Cup tie at Portsmouth is followed by a championship clash at Bristol City the following weekend. Uh, Cooper will be at the heart of the central defence in what promises to be a full-on seven days with his regular partner Jafet Tanganga ruled out through suspension for all three matches. Uh, that inconvenience will not trouble six-foot-six six Cooper in the slightest who is raring to go and do it all again in what will be his ninth season at the club. Oh, I'm just really excited for, for it to begin now. He said, the first thing we, we want to do is have a good start. Uh, we look at the first week with Watford at home and Bristol in the cup and in Bristol City. 
Obviously, the Watford games are most important to begin with because we want to have a great start to the campaign and then kick off from there as much as we can. This weekend's encounter with the Hornets promises to be an intriguing one after both sides ended the previous campaign in fine form. That's something Cooper is determined Mill can continue in front of their own supporters, he said. Our Watford are a strong side. They finished the season reasonably strongly and we know what to expect. Like Watford will look to dominate position and hopefully we can press them harder and uh, play with high intensity. Uh, the crowd will be in our favour so we need to make the most of that and I'm sure it will be a good game. Uh, Neil is really big on the way we will perform at the Den especially. I think it was five wins out of six under Neil there and we're just excited as a group to be able to play there again with it full up with the fans. Um... And what does the next nine months have in store for the Lions and their followers? Oh, you never know, replied the 29-year-old. The championship's always crazy every year. Uh, we're just looking to be consistent with our performances and have a strong start, like I said. See where that can put us. Uh, the championship season is particularly intense, with 46 games to somehow be fitted in among four international breaks between now and early next May. But for a player who has spent the majority of his career at this level, the relentless run of matches is now just second nature. Oh, that's why you need the squad, said Cooper. We have 20 plus players to contribute and I'm sure there will be changes in the side uh, week in and week out. Uh, we need every player and they will be there fighting for every available space in the team. Uh, cup competitions could potentially add to the fixture list, something which uh, hasn't really been an issue for the Lions in recent years after a string of early exits. And that is something Cooper is keen to rectify, especially as there were some memorable days in knockout contests during Harris's initial tenure. Oh, the last time we had a good cup run was when we beat Everton and lost to Brighton, said Cooper. Oh, we've missed that, especially with the FA Cup, which has been an avenue for us in the past. Uh, if we can get confidence in our game and then we can hopefully be some top sides in the Cups like we have done before. Uh, we've got Portsmouth away next week to start with and if we can win there then hopefully the League Cup can give us a good opportunity to get back to those Cup runs that we used to have. Um, yeah, I, I'll bat, I've been banging the drum for this. I would love, I would love a League Cup run. Because uh, I think the farthest we've got is quarterfinals. We've done that twice. Uh, if we could get the semi-finals or even the final of the League Cup, ah, uh, that would be great. That would be amazing. Um, especially, especially if, as expected, what a lot of people were predicting that we're going to finish mid-table, or we might even have a bit of a relegation fight that hopefully we will win. Then you you want to have a go in the cup, and so it gives you something op optimistic to look forward to. Um, so yeah, but uh, we'll see how we get on first, but. Uh, there you go. Now, moving on to this. I uh, mentioned this in yesterday's uh, video, but the stories from the South London Press. This one from the Summit News is a lot better written by Herbie Russell. Very detailed. I love the way Herbie writes. I've never met the guy, but uh, it's fantastic stuff here. So, Mill FC has exciting plans for the London Overground Station near the Den. A developer behind the new Bermsey plan will now contribute to the new train stop. So you can see it there, that's it on the left apparently. Uh, Mill FC has held exciting plans to build a new London Overground station of 3,500 homes near the Den. Uh, club executives see the new Bermsey plan led by a developer renewal as central to the club's future success. The £1.9 billion scheme uh, has been in place since January 2022, but Lucian Council has just approved a revised re uh, version on July the 31st, 2024, which I reported on yesterday. Uh, I didn't realise it was from July, I thought it was from just the other day. Uh, the new Bermondsey plan is a landmark regeneration of the area around Mill FC. In January 2022, Lewisham Council rubber-stamped the new Bermondsey plan, consisting of around 3,500 homes, including roughly 1,200 affordable homes. However, developer renewal has had to alter some of the details, which is what just got approved. So obviously we, we heard that, but we didn't. We didn't know what got what what the changes were. Now here we have uh, Herbie Herbie Russell from the Southern News telling us what they are, which is very much appreciated. So Transport for London (TfL) originally planned to deliver Surrey Canal Overground Station using the Housing Infrastructure Funding (HIF). TfL later informed Lucian Council that HIF was no longer allocated to the planned station. 
Why is that then? Is that because the Labour government have got rid of it? Because we know they've uh, got rid of winter fuel payments and, and other stuff. Um, that's uh, hopefully that's not that's not what's happening. But pff, I don't know. Uh, Renewal will now contribute seventeen point seventeen million pounds to the station, and the figure could rise to twenty five million. And TfL must still find sources of funding for the project. So Jesus, what's going on there then? Uh, so TfL could say, "Oh, we can't find the money, and it's not going to go ahead." Or what, what's that? Or TfL will say, "Oh, we're not funding it," and then someone else is like Lewisham or someone's going to have to step in and, and try and fund it. What's what's happening there? Um, there will also be a hundred fewer affordable homes, taking the total number from one thousand two hundred to one thousand one hundred. Uh, the reduction in affordable homes is due to Renewal's newly agreed transport contribution. So there you go. So um, they've basically done a bit of a horse trading and said, look, if we have to pay more, then we want to be able to sell sell some of the houses for higher prices. That's what houses are. So the houses, the flats, aren't they? Uh, the reduction in affordable homes is due to Renewal's new... Yeah, I, sorry, I just read that. Uh, Lucian Council's decision to approve the scheme is the latest boost to Mill FC. It made a Labour run authority granted the club a 999 year lease on three sites around the den. Um, oh, and they, oh no, there, there is more. The decision paved the way for the championship side to increase the ground's capacity from 20,000 to 34,000. Uh, Mill FC, Lewisham Council and Renewal appeared to be in lockstep over the area's future, a far cry from the situation a decade ago. Uh, Lewisham Council initially had plans to forcibly purchase land surrounding the ground and hand it over to Renewal. Mill FC then threatened to leave the borough and the council scrapped the plans the following year. A spokesman for Mill FC said, uh, Mill FC welcome the, the news of the revised master plan. The club looks forward to its continuation of work with its community, businesses and council as part of the exciting regeneration plans of New Bermondsey. Councillor James J. Walsh, a cabinet member for inclusive uh, regeneration and planning at Lewisham said, I am delighted that we continue to make sure that Lewisham is bringing forward and consenting much needed mixed use housing developments for our borough, helping to tackle the ongoing housing crisis and unlocking an undeveloped part of our city. Uh, the scheme has ambitious plans for home, sports, cultural, transport infrastructure. It will bring nearly two pound, two billion pounds of investment to Lewisham, and with that, jobs and opportunities for local people. Uh, so there you go. Um, some more details from Herbie Russell of the Southern News. And now, um, moving on to this. Um, a new Junior Alliance partner, the Warehouse Cafe in SE 16. Um, Junior Lions partner. Um, I think they've just lost a few. Uh, obviously struggling this season because uh, if you had the Surrey Keys, uh, they were basically uh, sponsored, partnered with like was it Frankie and Benny's and Hollywood Bowl and, and places like that. And they've just been told they have to leave at the end of the month. They are that that's gonna, all going to get knocked down and they're going to build a new Tesco there. Even though they already have a Tesco, but phew, hey, uh, we need more Tescos, don't we? Don't we, people? With all these uh, flats being built, we need more Tescos. So, uh, delighted to say that new Junior Lions partner, the Warehouse Cafe in SC16. Uh, so here we go. So Mill Football Club's newest Junior Lions partner, the Warehouse Cafe. SC16. The Warehouse Cafe SC16 is a family run uh, cafe and offers a friendly atmosphere as well as most importantly, great tasting food. Um, so there you go. Uh, to celebrate the partnership, Lions fans with a valid 2425 Junior Lions membership can enjoy 10% off. So obviously you need your, to show your membership card to get that, but apparently no one's got their cards yet. So I guess you can't use that for uh, this weekend. Um, maybe if you show them their old one, they'll uh, they'll just give you the 10% off because they seem like decent people, to be honest. Uh, you can find the Warehouse Cafe SE16 on Verney Road, London, SE16 3DY. If you don't know where that is, uh, that is there. So the road opposite Zampa Road, you go down that long road. A lot of people park down there because uh, it's industrial. So a lot of these industrial units here, light industrial units, um, mostly garages. I think there's a laundry there. I think they've just opened up a, a food uh, production kitchen down there. Um, where that arrow is, I think it's actually where the the, to the left of that, that actually that grey line, I think it's actually there. 
Um, they're open every day. Uh, obviously, it's it's out of the way. It's it's tucked in the back streets. I think they they probably uh, cater to some of the workers in in and around uh, in the local garages and stuff. And obviously, looking to get a big boost on match day. And as I've just told you about the renewal project, obviously that is going to go ahead. It can happen now. And it's happening in stages. I think one phases one to five. And in some of those stages, I think it might be stage three, or maybe even stage two, is the Mule Cafe. The, obviously the one that's right outside the ground, which obviously was a great business idea at the time, to take a unit that was um, housing... Um, maybe a garage or something and convert it into a cafe. Absolute brilliant idea to do that. Uh, it does a roaring trade. Um, that's all going to go. The Mill Cafe is going to be told uh, to uh, Foxtrot Oscar. Um, they have to leave. And obviously you would think, well, surely they would wait. Well, they could do it tomorrow, I guess. Because uh, obviously getting people evicted and getting them to leave and, and even if they're... Uh, their um, uh, what do you call it? That their uh, rental agreement or whatever is up, and but if they're still there, you have to and they refuse to leave. You can evict them, and you have to go through all that. So I would imagine they would want to get them out as soon as possible. So it, obviously, it could be that I think maybe this season could be the last season of the Mule Cafe, but then after that, where are you going to go? Well, it looks like you go to the the Warehouse Cafe. So a good idea of them to 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 uh, partner up with the, with the Junior Alliance and and offer this discount to Mill fans as as um, sadly we're going to see the Mill Cafe um, disappear and then uh, all alternative uh, options need to be found. So uh, there you go. Maybe check it out if you can. Uh, give them some business because they're supporting the club. Uh, I think uh, the relationship between the Mill Cafe and Millwall is uh, a bit tense. Uh, I believe the Millwall Cafe tried to get a license to sell alcohol, and the club objected to that uh, licensing application. Um, so, uh, not not the best of uh, um, uh, if the Millwall Cafe wanted to, to partner up with Millwall, would they accept it? I don't know, but uh, there seems to be some animosity there. Um, now, yesterday I told you about this big story, obviously it's still going on. We're waiting, we are waiting with bated breath. There is a meeting tomorrow uh, at the Den, uh, apparently between Mill Supporters Club uh, representatives and Mark Fairbrother and, and some other geezer about what the fuck they're trying to do here. But basically, if you missed it, if you missed it yesterday, go back and watch yesterday's video because it's quite funny how much I'm swearing. Um, they have, uh, they, it's already there, it's already there by the way, they've uh, rented a shipping container um, and they put it there where the blue bus used to be, uh, not last season but before before seasons where it used to be around the front, over there on the grass um, by where the bikes are, the nine bikes are. Um, and it's already there, so I imagine you have, the £6 cost is to pay for that. I imagine they're renting it, so I don't know how much those shipping containers cost to rent, but uh, that's why we, well, that's why there's a six pound charge. So yeah, if you didn't know, it's no bags. You're not going to be allowed to bring a bag in, um, and it's, they're going to charge you six pound. Um, and I think it's been universally slammed by everybody, um, namely that. The charge, basically, that the charge is so high, um, and uh, yeah, no, nobody is supporting this. Obviously, even the Mills and Bulls Club, they were like, "Well, we knew this was coming in because of the, they discussed it with the club in a summer meeting in May," um, but uh, they didn't know about the charge. So, and for the club to pull this out four days before the first game of the season at home is probably a bit of a diabolical liberty, to be honest. Um, so there you go. Now, is this £6 per bag? Is is that is that where our transfer funds are coming from? Is that why 
we haven't really signed any any extra players yet. Do we, are we relying on the, on the six pound per bag? So what we're going to do now, because we discussed this in yesterday's video. If you didn't see that, you should go and check it out. It's pinned on the YouTube channel, um, and it's also on Spotify. Uh, it's not on BitChute. BitChute has had an update and it's crashed. And I'm not I'm not uh, really doing anything with BitChute anymore. We can have a look around the different grounds in uh, London and elsewhere about what do they do with their bags what's their bag policy so we start off with Tottenham because of Tottenham have got this reputation of basically ripping their, ripping their fans off uh, to be fair uh, they don't really spend any money they they jacked up the prices they they have they one of the first clubs I believe to announce that they will be removing completely uh, the OAP deduction um, discount they will they're not giving discount tickets to old people anymore because they have too many old people going um, and they want those seats to be filled with people who are being paid full price so they are removing the discount and old people can pay full price or they can uh, sit at home and uh, lump it uh, suck on their Werther's Originals uh, as it were um, so, what is their policy? Do they charge £6 a bag? Right. Not permitted. You can't have a rucksack. No rucksacks, right? Again, the A4 size. This is the thing that you was coming around. A4 size, right? All permissible bags will be will be carefully searched. But the bags will be checked at an outer cordon. So, not as you go in at an outer cordon. So, for me all, that would be by the gates. By the... Uh, because obviously, if you are a nut job, a uh, jihadist, and you want to blow people up, you would do it where the people are. And before the game, the people are just outside the stadium. Um, so, what's what's what can we all do about that? Not much, unless the Met Police allow them to do a stop and search at the start of Zampa Road and at the start of Bel uh, Bellina Road or not Zampa Road anymore, sorry, John Belson Way sorry, John Belson Way and Bellina Road and let them search people or stop them from bringing bags in but how, uh, do you need a bylaw to do that? Uh, I don't know, but yeah, so this is Tottenham, right? You can have a personal bag of A4 size or similar why is that? because obviously if you're, if you're a bird if you're a bird you have a handbag or you have a purse and you carry it around with you and even now all all these kids with the broccoli haircuts they have these dopey little straps that go go across them um, and they have little, little man bags they're tiny little man bags for their phones because I don't know why they can't put their phone in their pocket but I, I don't know I don't know right you, you can have a club branded Spurs PVC drawstring bag, which can be purchased. So that's that one there, right? So I don't think it's see-through. I think it's just, you know, the drawstring bag. But it has to be. It has to be a, a Tottenham one. See, it has to be a, a Spurs bag from the online Spurs shop. Oh, or or a reusable drawstring bag for life, for one pound from the Tottenham Experience. So you have to buy a bag from Tottenham. So there you go again. They are kind of ripping off the fans. You have to have a bag from Tottenham. It can't just be any drawstring bag. It needs to be one that you've bought from Spurs. So you have to be a customer of Spurs to use the bag. A clear carrier bag. Uh, those issued with purchase in the Spurs shops will meet the criteria. So again, they're not saying you can have like a Tesco bag or you can have another bag that's see-through. Much like Mia Wall said, but they're saying, oh, the ones from the Spurs shop, they're nudge, 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 wink, wink. They're the ones. You must not put any personal bags that do not meet our criteria within these bags. So you can't have a bag within a bag. And laptop sleeves, I don't know what a laptop sleeve is. What's the point of our laptop sleeve? Um, which are no larger than 37 by 31. And this is the size of our club branded Spurs PVC drawback. Or so they're basically saying you can have a laptop sleeve, but why not just buy one of our bags and put your laptop in that? You can bring umbrellas in, but they have to be up to one meter in size, and you must not 
you, they must always be kept folded inside the stadium because, as we know, if you open your umbrella indoors, that is bad luck. Um, um, the club does not operate a left luggage service at the stadium, and any services provided by external services are not controlled by the stadium. And if you choose to utilize these facilities, you do so at your own risk. You can also expect queues before and after the match. So I think some uh, enterprising entrepreneur has uh, done some kind of uh, luggage service close to the new stadium, which the club is not endorsed because obviously they probably don't get any money out of that. So there you go. And they're not doing their own left luggage service. Right, so there you go. Again, they're not charging their fans £6 a bag to leave it in a left luggage facility. And that's Spurs. That is... Uh, Basically a scumbag club that rips off their own fans, if I'm going to be honest. Now here we go to Arsenal. Everyone loves Arsenal, don't they? They had their team as the uh, the epitome of a well-run club. Um, what's their bag policy? Uh, what can I bring into the stadium? We cannot permit large bags or suitcases. Only bags, A here we go again, A4 size. This seems to be something that... They've attached on. They've attached onto this, and this is modified on Monday, the twenty fourth of June, twenty twenty four. So a couple of months old. Only bags A four size or smaller are permitted into the stadium. All bags are subject to a search on entry. This can cause delays at the turnstile, so we discourage you from bringing a bag at all if possible. Um, and then they talk about. Uh, so here's what you can bring in. Now, this is interesting. Because they let you bring in clear plastic bottles, but 500 meters or a milli milliliters or less, uh, which you can't do at Millwall, because obviously we had moments where you're throwing bottles at people. Um, I imagine they may let you in if you take the lid off, but then what's the point? What's the, it's not bottled then it's an open vessel. Um, you can bring cr crutches if you are a cripple. And you can bring a small fold-up umbrella. So there you go. And these are all the things that you can't bring in. Uh, luggage storage facilities are available at London's King's Cross Station. So they're basically saying, we are not going to have a left luggage facility. We're not going to charge you six quid like Millwall trying to do. Uh, if you want to do it, go to the train station because a lot of these train stations in central London, uh, Victoria King's Cross etc have these facilities. Um, some of them are just like locker, locker styles where they're fully automated I believe that there are some where you there are like people there you hand them over to them and uh, there's a human being there um, so there you go now, so that's Arsenal we've, we, so we've seen Tottenham, we've seen Arsenal let's move on to Crystal Palace uh Visit in Selhurst. Can I bring a bag into the stadium on match days? A bag, backpack. So they let you bring in a backpack. They're not mentioning A4. No one's mentioning A4. Small enough to fit under your seat. So the size of a seat. That is that A4? Probably just a little bit bigger. Will be allowed into the ground subject to a full search at the turnstiles. If anything is not allowed into the ground, you will be able to leave it securely at the information centre by entrance nine, this service is free of charge. Free. The information centre opens three hours prior to kickoff and will close approximately half an hour after the final whistle. So there you go, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. Free of charge, everyone. Free of charge. And. Now the only thing is, it's only open half an hour after kickoff, or uh, half an hour after the game. Whereas Mill said their ones are going to be open for forty-five minutes. So, but I guess you—that's what you, you get the extra fifteen minutes. That—that's that's worth the six quid, isn't it? I guess. So okay, so we've seen from Spurs, we've seen from Arsenal, we've seen from Crystal Palace. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, Crystal Palace is the only one who have a left luggage facility. And it's free. So the others are telling you to go to the train stations and use those ones. Okay. So let's have a look at the championship at Wimbledon. 
the all tennis, all England Lennis lawn, all England lawn tennis uh, championships. Okay, right. So you would imagine oh, this is going to be expensive, no? Six quid, probably more than six quid. Must be more than six quid. I mean, they sell like strawberries and cream for like fucking eight quid. They rip people off all the time. It's, it's like uh, middle class, high prices all over the place, no? They must be charging their fans a, a hell of a lot. Right, the following items are prohibited from the Wimbledon tennis grounds. Any bag exceeding 40 by 30 by 30 centimetres. Hard sided containers bags such as picnic hammers or cool boxes. Vacuum flasks over 500 millilitres, camping chairs or other items of dual skin or tubular construction. And then any other item on the opinion of the All England Lawn Tennis Club, which may pose a hazard to the safe delivery of the championship, which is normal stuff such as knives, corkscrews, uh, pepper sprays, well fucking hell no shit, pepper spray, fireworks, flares, spray paint or other hazardous liquids or gases. Uh, Excessive electronic devices and accessories including camera lenses more than 300mm in length when extended, tripods or monopods, large flags, banners, rattles, klaxons or oversized hats. So Abraham Lincoln, get ye out. Any objects of clothing uh, bearing uh, political statements, objectionable or offensive statements, uh, hopefully that includes statements such as the futurist female because... Uh, that is, uh, I went to a restaurant where some, uh, one of the waiters, waitresses was wearing that and uh, seemed a bizarre thing to wear when you're trying to get tips off people. Um, so yeah, wheeled footwear or other equipment. So no skates or, or inline skates, including but not limited to scooters and bicycles. Erected tents or equipment and selfie sticks. Thank God for that. No selfie sticks. Um, so, but what about bags? So obviously, they've listed a bag, so... Now, here we go. Items refused entry can either be deposited in left luggage facilities or confiscated at the gates. Note that confiscated items cannot be returned on exit. So that's it. And they they let you bring alcohol in. You can bring in champagne or champagne. They let you bring champagne in. You cannot bring in... Spirits or fortified wines, so no buck fast, right? So they have a left luggage facility. I mean, that's got to be expensive, it must be more than six quid, right? Do you provide a left luggage service? This is from elp.wimbledon.com. This is from a year ago, though, so obviously, yeah. Wimbledon has free, uh, free as in the number three, left luggage kiosks available for guests and ticket holders to use during the championships. Uh, the Wimbledon Park uh, service in the queue is open from 5.30am. Uh, All England Lawn Tennis Club Wimbledon Park is open from 7.30am. And Somerset Road is open from 9am. All left luggage loca locations close one hour after the end of play. Uh, items are charged at £1 each for all bags. And £5 for larger items. Please note that bags deposited should be no bigger than 60 by 45 by 25 which is standard aircraft cabin size restrictions. So basically, they're expecting tourists to go there, maybe if they're on their way out of the country, to come in with their luggage, and that's it. So, they don't specify really what a, a £1 for, for all bags and £5 for larger items is. So it does, there's no specification between small and large. But five pounds for larger items. Five pounds. And meal war charging six. And they're charging a pound for smaller bags. For whatever that is. I, I, again, they don't specify what that is. Um, so, yeah. This is Wimbledon. The epitome of uh, expensive middle class pastime. Uh, Eight pound fifty strawberries and cream. Which isn't that large of a portion, by the way. And they're charging one pound for small bags and five pound for larger items. And Millwall are charging you or want to charge you six quid. Again, we wait to see if they back down tomorrow. So, 
let's have um, let's have a look at one last time at a football stadium. Let's have a look at the the biggest football stadium in the country. Not maybe not in terms of well, I think it is in terms of uh, of uh, seats. I think it is, isn't it? Hundred thousand, yeah. Wembley Stadium, the new Wembley Stadium, not like the old one, the new one. Bag policy. To make Wembley safe for everyone, there are restrictions on what you can bring into a bag in the stadium. And here's everything you need to know. Each person can only bring one small bag and it must not be bigger than the A4 size. So there we go, again with that A4 size. Which they all of the football clubs mention this, so I don't know if it's come from the FA or what. This A4 size, I don't know. Please note, this means the overall bag size. Bags that are half full and folded over to reduce their size will not be accepted. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. That sounds familiar. I think Millwall have just copied and pasted this from that. They've literally just copied and pasted it from Wembley Stadium. Bags that are half full and folded over to reduce overall size will not be accepted. They've copy and pasted from Wembley. Anyone carrying bags that do not meet the criteria above will not be allowed in. Why does the stadium have a bag policy? Safety is everything. That's why we carefully review public safety and stadium security policies every year looking for ways to improve them by limiting the size and style of bags people can carry in. Our bag policy enhances safety inside and outside the stadium, plus it speeds up security screening process. What about official per- but, uh, merchandise? Any matchday merchandise you buy will be supplied in a clear plastic bag and will be allowed into the stadium as well. If you buy merchandise outside the stadium, either from one of our retail outlets or the stadium store, the bag will be sealed. Please do not break the seal until you enter the stadium. Why? If it's a, if it's a clear plastic bag, why? What? What are you talking about? That... Again, that makes no fucking sense. Will my bags be inspected? Yes. All items and bags carried by spectators and staff will be carefully inspected when entering the stadium. This may include an electronic wanding or a pat-down. Uh, bags will be checked at an outer cordon. If there's a query on size, a bag gauge will be used. Are there exceptions? Well, yes. Of course, there are always exceptions. That's how we give preferential treatment to our... Uh, to our uh, people who pay us money. We do make exceptions for medical equipment, a few other things. You see how they say a few other things. Basically, if you are a rich motherfucker who pays Wembley a lot of money, you get an exemption because that's how it goes. But you must get permission in advance. If this applies to you, please contact us here ahead of the event day selecting medical exemption certificate as the topic. Uh, if you are eligible and Oh my god, look at this. This looks familiar as well. What have we got here? What have we got here? This looks a hell of a lot from. Oh my god, look. It's the same basic thing in the same order. The medical exemption in the same, literally the same way. A statement of higher or middle rate disability living, living allowance. Oh, it's the same thing. Receipt of either the severe disabling allowance or attendance allowance. It's the same thing. PIP. PIP. Qualifying annual uprate letter. Qualifying annual uprate letter. I think Millwall have just copy and pasted from Wembley's Wembley site. Or maybe the retard that they hired to... Uh, um, give all this money for uh, tr- terrorism prevention training uh, has just copy and pasted it from the Webley website and they've just paid basically paid some guy who's copy and pasted it from Wembley another another scam that Millwall fallen for isn't that uh, unusual a qualifying annual uprate letter oh oh look at this a qualifying annual uprate letter but then we have some stuff here see you if you're going to copy and paste it, you need to change it a little bit. You need to change it a little bit. You can't have it exactly the same because then people can figure it out. But, but uh, obviously, 
I figured it out and uh, I'm not a fucking idiot so I found it here a personal letter outlining your access requirements so there you go but they don't they don't say access card registered blind uh, vet, veterans agency letter confirming war disability pension which you you would you would think Millwall would put that on because obviously they're very big on on veterans stuff they've started a veterans football team but they didn't decide to put that in their thing a personal letter outlining your access requirements from your hospital specialist within a reasonable doubt so it can't be because you had gout 10 years ago uh, if resident outside the UK please use equivalent documentation uh, please note this list is not exhaustive and we consider each application on a case by case basis so there you go um okay cameras can you bring a camera you can bring a camera but not in its own bag why that isn't that smaller than an A4 you see you can bring A4 but you can't bring a, a camera in, in its own bag which is smaller than A4 our handbags like well of course we can't upset the ladies can we we can't upset the ladies uh, we love the ladies don't we gents we love the ladies we can't live without them we can't live with them but we do love them are handbags allowed? Yes, unlike some event venues, we are not banning all bags. But handbags count as the small bag that you're allowed to bring in the stadium. Ah, oh, so <laughs> that's the one bag. You can only bring in one bag, and that's your one bag. Uh, you can't bring in another bag. So if you are a woman, a lady person, and you have a handbag, or well, maybe a man as well, then we'll, you know, it's up to you. No, don't push it on me, but if you want to carry a handbag, that's up to you. Um... You cannot go to the club shop and then buy bring in another bag. Because that's two bags and you're not allowed two bags. Who do you think you are? You're just a normal you're just a normal meal fan. You can't you can't bring in two bags. Um so yeah, there you go. Um Oh no, this is the Wem- I'm on the Wembley one. Oh, I was talking about this is the Wembley one. Uh so long as it's smaller than A4 and meets the rest of your bag policy, then you can bring in a handbag. Um yeah. And uh, they do not offer a left luggage facility. I thought I pulled it up. Um, I thought I pulled it up. Is it on here? It's not on here. So, yeah. It, I did have a look and they don't offer a lof- left luggage facility at Wembley Stadium. But they do nearby. Because obviously, a lot of people, and that would mean there's a lot of money. So there's a company called Luggage Hero. And they're around Wembley because obviously there are people around Wembley. There are hotels right next to Wembley, um, and obviously people staying in hotels. They probably don't want to leave their luggage there because they'll get they get nicked out of it, or if they have to check out. So there is a facility for left luggage around the area. And would you look at this? Would you look at it? not only have they copy and pasted from the Wembley site about all all of the conditions. They've copied this here from Wembley Park Stadium. £5.90 a day. £5.90 a day. So this is open from 7.30. Wembley Park Stadium, luggage hero. It's at the station. So you have to go all the way to, back up to the station, which is 276 metres away from uh, Wembley uh, Stadium, uh, which I, I guess uh, that would be Wembley Way, uh, to the Jubilee Line uh, Wembley Park Station. And it costs you... Five pound ninety a day, and they are open from seven thirty a.m. to eleven forty-five p.m. So that's a hell of a lot of hours. So that's a day. Millwall are charging you; they want to charge you six pounds to leave a bag there, which opens three hours before kickoff. During kickoff, which is around ninety minutes, uh, the game with ninety minutes, and then forty-five minutes afterwards. So let's do the quick math. Three plus an hour plus another half hour for the game, and then another forty-five minutes. That's another hour, and then fifteen minutes. So five and a half, five and five hours and fifteen minutes. So you can go to Millwall, uh, leave a bag there for a total of five hours and fifteen minutes, and they will charge you six pounds, which is ten pence more than Wembley Park Station charge you. For a whole fucking day from 7.30am to 
11.45 p.m. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, I don't know uh, Millwall thought this was going to be a good idea. Um, they've obviously copy and pasted it from Wembley. Um, why they would do that, why, why they would look to Wembley... Uh, for what to do when Wembley is the national stadium that has 100,000 seats in it and not look to what Crystal Palace are doing, to what Arsenal are doing, to what uh, Spurs are doing. But they're looking at Wembley and what they're doing and they're more expensive. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, this is this is an absolute... I thought it was bad yesterday off, off the bat. Now that I've looked around at what other sporting venues are doing um this is this is words words cannot express how bad this is six pounds six pounds to leave a bag outside of the den while the game is going on for 90 minutes um this is disgusting absolutely Fucking disgusting. And on that note, thank you for listening and watching and goodbye.